So training and development. Um, again, we talked about the tail show and new process and the Starbucks experience. And um, I, I left off that the Star Starbucks supervisors are considered the trainers, um, which is one thing that I think is great because majority of the time the supervisors spend most of the time with employees. So the importance of training and development is the consistency. Um, every You should be able to go to any Starbucks and get the same experience, the same quality, no matter which location that you go. So therefore, that is why it's very important for um the Starbucks training to be very linear and very consistent. So therefore, um, Starbucks employees can be able to um, continue with the same process so that it can lead to the, the customers getting the same quality and experience. Um, one thing that I learned from my interview with one of their supervisors is that um, the future is to have 100% engagement in training. So eliminating that written and writing portion of the training, which can be sometimes dull, and making it 100% hands-on and engaging. So we're going to talk about intrinsic, I'm sorry, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation strategies. Take a little diagram there of the differences between the two. So Starbucks, you hear me a lot say partners, and that's because um, you know in Starbucks try to employ, um, try to motivate the employees and make it feel more like a partnership, so that they're in it together for the better of the business. So therefore, that's why they refer to partnership. Also, they have great um, stock benefits as well, um, which if you do more research, you know you would know more about. Um, the part of their um, motivation strategies is um, some of the incentives and compensation that comes with it. So um, some wonderful incentives um, that I got for um, being Brisa of the month um, was that I was able to get the weekends off. Um, I was able to basically um, get, um, you know, free lunches, um, free markouts where I can get merchandise, or sometimes they would give us uh, um, some Starbucks credit that allow us to buy um, stuff based on, um, buy like purchases um, merchandise um, online um, using, uh, on, on the on the expense of Starbucks. So meaning if the, you know, you get a hundred dollar Starbucks gift card, you're able to purchase whatever you want um, for being employed in a month. Um, the compensation piece would, will basically link into the appraisals valuations. Um, once you do your evaluations, you do get compensated on your performance. So it would be a, a pay increase, um, a pay increase or getting promoted. So the compensation part is another um, motivation technique that they use as well. Also, their benefits is very, 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 perf um, very, very outrageous in a great way. Um, I know that if you're going to school, um, that Starbucks will help you go to school as long as you are um, meeting certain requirements within the business. Um, but their benefits is very is, is phenomenal as um, far as their dental health um, and uh, the benefits of being able to get free drinks uh, as well. So that's those are some great things that keeps um, employees from being motivated more so in an intrinsic and extrinsic way. Um, another way thing is too is also making it a positive work experience. That's very important that um, Starbucks focus on that strategy because they want work to not feel like work. They want it to be somewhere fun that people can come to work every day and be able to um, perform to their best ability. So making it, making Starbucks have a positive work atmosphere is very important. They do work on a very um, non-negotiable um, and no tolerance of drama whatsoever. And one thing that um, that the Starbucks supervisor says she used in part of her training um, is that she made sure when they do uh, – with the, the manager stated that um, they made sure that they focus on the employee's goals. So they tell the employees to come up with a goal, and then from there they use that um, – the, 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 they use the goals of the employees to kind of determine their strategy plan to make sure that they're motivated. Performance measures and um, their role, the role with the performance management system. So Starbucks make sure that they always focus on quality and quantity um, when it comes to Starbucks, um, how they're doing within a company and far as the quality of the customers. So it is very typical that they did focus on store performance for as sales, margins, and budgets. Um, the metrics part is something that lets um, the company lets it lets the manager know where they store stand as um, for as hitting goals. Um, there are some times where they do have to focus on the turnover rate and retention rate to make sure that that's never in the red. Um, because it, you know it's one of those things where the district managers or corporate will have to you have to have those tough conversations to see why are those numbers are dropping, and then you have to be able to give um, 
an important reason or, or a legitimate reason why your numbers are not doing good. So Starbucks do focus on the turnover rate and retention and especially the customer feedback. So there's so many ways that Starbucks can get feedback from the customers to see how they're doing. And, you know, feedback is one of the things that Starbucks really, really take on um, participating in. I remember one time that Starbucks was not paying for Wi-Fi. Um, well, Wi-Fi wasn't free at the moment and customers had to pay for it. And um, the customers gave that feedback and now that they should have free Wi-Fi or they're going to take their business elsewhere. And Starbucks was able to react instantaneously. Quasa is something else that we've they use when it comes to um far as cleanliness and policy and procedures, far as making sure that there's no any any help code violations. Quasa does is a company that comes in and, and randomly check the store for cleanliness to make sure that they pass their health audits. Um, speed and service compliance is something else that the district manager will look into to make sure that drinks are going out at a decent speed, but also with top quality. And um, a very common thing is comparing your numbers from the previous year. So they do look at metrics to see if they pass their goals or made some kind of um, improvements from the last year metrics. Team building concepts. So Starbucks um, do believe in an all hands on deck rule. Whenever there's um, a huge rush or um, a high volume of customers at that moment, everyone do stop what they're doing to help um, some employees um, do have the option to come back early from the breaks to help with the rush when they see that there's an opportunity to get the business going. Um, forming a team is very self-explanatory and very important. Um, you do have to make sure you have a team um, that makes sure that you're able to hit goals. Building trust is very important. Um, when you have trust in your team, you're, they're able to, um, they're able to um, basically trust your feedback and the direction that you're giving them to become a, a better individual for as an employee. Um, also, finding a focus and vision is very important as well. Um, employees should be able to know uh, what the company's vision is. Um, and if you, if they don't, it's very important that the, the leadership team um, help the employees see that vision because otherwise they don't know what they're working for if they don't have the, if everyone's not on the same page and if they're not familiar with the vision. Some of my feedbacks for um, the team building part was that I did encourage the person I was interviewing to have more team outings. That's more so of a, um, a, a team building um, atmosphere. Um, I know I took one of my teammates to Wally World, Wally World where we we're able to work as teams to come up with a strategy to beat the other team, um, which made us Think of great team building skills, and we are able to see different personalities of who would be the, the analytical person, who would be the more visual. So you get to learn more about your team, but also work as a team together. Um, I'll talk about huddles in, in my previous slides, but icebreakers are very important as well. Um, it allows you to not think about the business and learn more about your employees. Um, some of my, again, some of my things that I did with my team personally um, was, again, take them to different events that require us to work as a team or different um, outings or attractions where we have to work as a team um, to be able to um, accomplish a goal. Staffing and process. So the managers are usually the recruiters. Um, the higher the position, um, it, 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 it varies on if the managers will be part of that or not. Um, but for entry-level positions, the managers are the recruiters. And once someone applies to their location, they do get notifications sent to their email, letting them know that a, a new candidate have applied. Again, the higher positions are have a different process. Um, if you're coming in as a manager, you will have a um, recruiter reach out to you, and you will have a panel um, of people interviewing you for that role and some of the interview questions are basically focused on integrity and more so um, problem solving and the escalation questions is what some of their interview questions um, consist of um, some best practices of getting the job that that I learned is that studying the culture and knowing what they strive for is, is one lead way that, that would get you into the company um, another um, important for a staffing process is always, um, you know, make sure you're hiring people at the certain at the perfect time. Um, especially their busiest season is Christmas, and their slowest season is more so towards when school is out. So it's very important to make sure you have the proper staff at the proper time for that volume. And one feedback that I got about the the staffing process is the. Um, is the fact that um, some candidates do not like the application process, which is very lengthy. And I know Starbucks are, is looking into minimizing that part where the um, application process is not so long to where they lose potential great candidates. 
labor relations. So some best practice for former labor relations is to always, you know, their motto is at Starbucks is compliment out loud and correct in private. So when an employee is doing a good job, it's very important to give that recognition of when someone's doing a great job. Um, it's important to have effective communications when changes occur. Um, you know, your team might be familiar with just one process and now you have to you know, break their habit and teach them something new. So it's important to study the perfect um, communication styles when implementing change, so therefore you don't have some people that are resistant to it. Um, picking candidates to have a perfect culture fit. Um, one of my models is you can teach um, the skills, but you can't teach the personality. So it's very important to hire people that fit the culture at Starbucks, which makes it very easy to um, train and develop. Responding to the business flow is very important as well. So when I was a leader, when the business was slow, I made sure that I give the opportunity to ask anyone if they could go home early because we didn't need that labor at that moment or asking people to stay later if they can when the business is um, busy. Also, notice the difference between your part-time versus your full-time workers. It's very important because different. Um, if you're a part-time worker versus a, a full-time, you might qualify for different benefits or have certain rules that you might have to comply with um, depending on their status within the company. So it's very important to know the difference between those two in Starbucks. And that concludes my presentation. I really did enjoy this class, and hopefully you enjoyed my PowerPoint. You have a great day.